So let's start. Um, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Um, it's a great honor to be here and sharing with you my passion and knowledge about the Elasticsearch stuff. I'm re really excited because this is my first Drupal session. <laughs> and like, excited is the right word. <laughs> um, I want to apologize because we're supposed to be two speakers, but um, the other guy, Velin Velchev from Pro People, uh, had some issues and uh, he wasn't able to come. So, sorry about this. Um, my name is uh, Nico Ignatov. Um, this is my tw uh, Twitter account. Um, I worked several years for Pro People and from now, I'm a founder of a new company that will focus on Drupal development and Elasticsearch integrations. Um, I'm uh, using PHP since 2006 and uh, using Drupal since, uh, since uh, 2009 when I joined Pro People. And it was uh, love from my <laughs> first look. Um, yeah. I uh, really love the new technologies and uh, try to give my knowledge to people uh, if I can. Um, I'm a volunteer in uh, Drupal uh, Bulgaria Foundation. Uh, we are trying to make uh, Drupal popular in Bulgaria. Um, and I'm a maintainer of the Elasticsearch Connector module for uh, Drupal and the main architect of the, the module. Uh, and my co my colleagues uh, <laughs> used to call me Mr. Elastic because of this. <laughs> yeah. So what we are uh, going to talk about, uh, we are going to talk about what is Elasticsearch, how it works, uh, what we uh, did uh, for Drupal. Uh, I will show you a quick demo, live demo. Let's hope it will work. I have a video for backup, <laughs> so don't worry. <laughs> uh, we will see the demo. Um, yeah, and uh, we'll talk about the roadmap of the project. But before we start, let's show some respect to the creator of the Elasticsearch. Uh, his name is Shai Banan. You can find more about him on the links I provide. He did a uh, great job with uh, Elasticsearch, I can say, and uh, he, he have a lot of experience with uh, distributed system and open source searches. So. At first, I ask myself, is it really elastic and why it's elastic? It was very, very strange to me why you should call something elastic. <laughs> and after a while playing with the system, I really saw that it's, it's very elastic. And I just wonder how, how to represent you how elastic can be the system. And just take this photo. <laughs> 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 This is actually not Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> so with Elasticsearch, you can split your data and scale massively. And it, the most important is that it's not so hard to do it. And it's great technology for me. So, but to get your attention again <laughs> after this destruction picture, uh, let's uh, see who is, who, who is using the, this system. Uh, Bloomberg, uh, this big company, is using the Elasticsearch for uh, work warehouse, and they crunch more than uh, 1.5 billion work line per day. The Guardian analyze how the users interact with the news, and they have more than 5 million users, I think. And GitHub, you most probably all of you searching in GitHub, and GitHub is using Elasticsearch for searching in the code. So a lot of files there. And some companies like Facebook, um, sorry, uh, Atlassian, Foursquare, SoundCloud, Stack Overflow, ah, Wikipedia also using Elasticsearch. So a lot of big companies are using Elasticsearch, and it seems like uh, Elasticsearch fulfill their, their needs. So what is Elasticsearch, actually? It's a 
distributed real time search engine and analytics engine. And it's a data store like uh, MongoDB. Um, it's distributed out of the box. It's very easy to just start new instance of Elasticsearch and they will form a cluster. And it's very easy. And this was something I really like. Uh, it has a REST API with JSON. It's very easy to, to work with it. You will see. Uh, it's uh, built on top of Apache OC and it's open source. You can find uh, the, the GitHub repository on my presentation. Uh, it's a schema frame. You don't need to specify your schema before you index uh, the, the, the documents. Uh, there is no need to tell the Elasticsearch that this field is uh, date, this field is uh, integer and so on. And it's document oriented. You can put JSON documents in this system. Uh, yeah, and it also nested. You can put nested documents. It's great. So how how we can install it? It's pretty simple. Just download the Elasticsearch from uh, Elasticsearch.org, unzip it, and if you have Java, just go uh, to the bin folder of the main Elasticsearch folder and execute Elasticsearch, and it will start the Elasticsearch. And if you have default settings um, and start another system with Elasticsearch, they will form a cluster like immediately. And that's it. You can start using and pushing your documents there. It's very easy. And I will show you right now. But I just want to show you some tools that I'm using for the uh, demos. Uh, it's a uh, Advanced task client for uh, Chrome browser. It's pretty good system for testing some REST uh, APIs. And I'm using a plugin system for Elasticsearch called Head to see what will happen, uh, what is happening when we push indexes in uh, Elasticsearch and so on. Um, Elasticsearch is a plugin system and I want to extend it a lot. And there are I started using Elasticsearch maybe one year ago, and there was no many plugins, but right now they are crazy. The community there is good. <laughs> so, I have one virtual machine right now. Come on. And I have downloaded the Elasticsearch. Can you see? Okay. Now the Elasticsearch from Elasticsearch.org and I have this version and this version. It's the same archive, just extracted twice. So I can go to the first one and just execute the Elasticsearch. Now Elasticsearch is trying to join other nodes in the network to, to form a cluster, but it's pretty easy. And this is the head plugin, and right now we can see that this is my instance of Elasticsearch up and running. I can just call a simple get to see that Elasticsearch is running right now. Okay. So we have for right now started Elasticsearch and we can start pushing documents, indexing stuff and so on. So, to show you how the distributed search works, to understand it, we only right now started one, one instance of Elasticsearch and it's one node in the Elasticsearch terms. Uh, they, they call it node. So we started one node of Elasticsearch. And this is like we have a new installed My MySQL. Right now we need to create the database for it, or the index for Elasticsearch. <coughs> How quickly we can do it? Uh, we just put a user put a HTTP request and the name of the the name of the index. I will just show you with the uh, REST client. Uh, 
Okay. We have the, the server. It's over HTTP, as I said. We specify the name of the index. And here we specify some nice settings. <laughs> They're very important, actually. Uh, you can specify a lot of settings here, but these are the most important you need to remember. Uh, the number of shards and the number of replicas. Let's just create first the index, and I will explain you. Okay, we have acknowledged, true, so it's created. And if I reload the head, I can see that there are some 0, 1, 2. And what is this? So what's happening right now is that I put th three shards in the system, which means that there are three units of data. This is a low level uh, Wusin indexes that are allowing you to distribute uh, your data to three servers right now. So if I put another server here, some of the shards will move to the second one, and some will be replicated. On the first image, you saw that there was no replica. And this is because we have only one, one node. And <laughs> it cannot replicate it, actually. So if we put the third node, it will move the other shards to the third node. And if we lose one node, it will automatically record for, for the other nodes. And we can put multiple indices. Let me show you. Right now, you can see that the replica shards, these are the shards you cannot see. <laughs> these are the shards are actually right now. And these are all the shards that are the replica shards. And if I start a new instance right now, it's the same machine, but just uh, another instance of Elasticsearch. They will form a cluster, and you move the shards between them. It will take some time to transfer the data. And we have it. So. Uh, now I can put, for example, the other index. Again, with three shards and one replica. And we can see it here, again. So right now we have two databases, one called news, the second one called Twitter. And we can start using, actually, the, the system. So, to index a document, it's very easy. We have the index right now. We just specify the, the index, the type of the document, and the ID of the document. Uh, this are the, for example, imagine you have a note, type article, and the note ID. And the body of the document, in JSON object. And putting this to Elasticsearch, it will index it automatically. And what will happen, actually, it, if we put it to one node, it will decide to which chart to send the, the document. It will replicate it. It will go back to the, the first chart. And we will return the, the result to the client. So showing you this. OK, I have. I have one document here. I can just put it. You can see put comma. And I receive the following response. What is actually important with the response to remember? The version ID. This is very important for the distributed system because this is the way how you, you can handle the, the conflicts. For example, if two users try to put the same document to different nodes, 
the system should somehow uh, reduce the conflict because you cannot sure which version of the, the document you are trying to, to put again, for example, or to update. And when you put again the, the document, it just replace it and increase the version ID. And if you specify a new version ID, uh, for example, if you take the document, the version ID is 2, and you put it again, you should specify the version ID 2, and if somebody else, in meanwhile, put this document again, you, you will get a conflict. So you can resolve conflicts like this. So to get uh, to get a document, you just execute the get command, and you receive the, the document, and uh, all the, the, the JSON, of all the things in the JSON object are in the source field. How the get is working, just you can call whenever uh, not you want. Uh, it finds the right uh, shard for you, and it's returned the, the document for you. So to, to update the document, as I said, you need to put it again with the put command or use a script uh, for Elasticsearch that will update a specific field. Uh, it, it is the same actually, but it, uh, with the scripting is on a shard level, some Elasticsearch stuff, <laughs> and it will be fast, faster actually, but it will do the same. So uh, to delete uh, a document, just execute delete. To delete the index, just execute the delete command. It's pretty pretty straightforward. So the funny part is the search, actually. Uh, we right now put some documents, uh, and right now we need to search them. To make a search, uh, the examples on the Elasticsearch.org, so the, for the beginners, let's say, uh, show you the the query in the URL. But this is the old Apache source uh, stuff <laughs> that I don't like very much. And we use the body for our examples to, to show you how the DSL query works. But just show you some example how you can test the system with uh, the, the query parameters. What happens when you make search? You just go one node again. This time, because it's a full text search, should go to the all shards, because it, it cannot know which specific shard to call, if you don't specify, of course, but this is another topic. Merge the results from all the shards, and then give you back the result. So. Let me index some documents right now and show you how you can search. Okay. So I have, I've put one document. I will put second one right now. And now I can go and search. As you can see, I'm calling the search endpoint, not the, I don't have any query in the URL, and I have this body that will match my documents, and this is called uh, DSL query. It's a very, very powerful, and it's something that make the difference, I think, uh, with other search engines. Uh, you can nest a lot of stuff here. Uh, it's pretty awesome, pretty awesome. So, you execute the post command with the search, and I uh, tell the, the Elasticsearch that I need to match the user that is user 2. And right now, I don't have any documents. Okay? So I need to index another document because I don't have any users 2. I will put another document with uh, user 2. Now I will go and search again. But let's check in here too. And here is my document. Okay. So uh, uh, we will not uh, discuss uh, in very details the DSL query because it's a very big topic. You can do a whole session for this actually. 
Uh, but let's focus on how actually uh, the, the full text search is working. The full text search um, is working by creating the so-called inverted index, and the most search engines use this inverted index. And what is happening when you put, um, for example, a text, it will separate the text into words or uh, terms. Then we will make a unique list of these terms, a sorted unique list. And then we will uh, specify which document contain these terms. And for example, if I have three documents indexed in the system right now, um, and I have some words in it, it will match each word in each document. Something like this. And when I search for, for example, Drupal.com, I will get the third document as relevant. Yeah. Uh, or only if I search for Bean, I will get two documents. So it, in this way, it's make very faster. So th this process in uh, making this inverted index is called uh, tokenization and normalization. And it's uh, analysis, actually, in Elasticsearch. In each field, when you put a document and you have a string in it, uh, it uh, by default go through this process, and it's the default process that parses uh, the, the string into words, make them more case, and store it in the inverted index. And you can uh, you can have one tokenizer that make the the separation of the words, and multiple token filters that, for example, implement the stemming part and so on. So Elasticsearch uh, has many other nice features. Uh, as I said, it's, uh, his, um, it's a DSL query language, uh, percolating, that it's reverse searching. Instead of uh, putting a document in the search, you put a search query, and then execute a document, and it, it returns which query match. And for example, if you have shop, and you, you are all user, for example, to subscribe for a price. If, if the price of the products become below a specific price, to get a notification, and you can very easily do this with uh, this percolating stuff. It's a very powerful system. You have the facets in an aggregation as the same like uh, the Apache Solar stuff. Uh, it's the same actually in the latest version of the Elasticsearch. We will not have facets, we will have only aggregations because it's the same and more powerful than the facets. We have parent-child relation, which is very, very powerful thing. It's something like joins in MySQL. You can specify the parent document, the child document. You have aliasing. Uh, that can be, for example, if you have one index with several types, you can alias the, um, for example, you can alias this index to something else and filter the, the whole results by some criteria. For example, you want only type articles to be shown and call the index like normal index. Uh, the dahlias like normal index, and you get the documents. You have also geolocation and attachments. Attachments are handled with Apache Tika, the same like Apache Solar. And we have many more features, but I show um, uh, select some videos that you, you need to watch to get more uh, information about the Elasticsearch. And the, the community there is big, and it's something like Drupal, I think. <laughs> So, to <laughs> to the <a> point, <laughs> actually, uh, this is the module that I've made. Uh, it's a Elasticsearch connector. Uh, the main idea for this module is to build a whole ecosystem using the Elasticsearch. Uh, it, right now, it has uh, integration with the Search API. It has now uh, Watchdog. It has uh, statistics, but statistics is not very good module right now. It's just a port from Drupal statistic module, uh, which all we all know that it's not so good. But I'm using the the Elasticsearch as a backend. 
we have a uh, the view module and we have the, the views module integration that allow you to extract documents from Elasticsearch without having them in, in Drupal. So let's hope the demo will work. I have installed two kickstart distributions just to be more nice. We have the products right now, the product listing, and it's come from the search API. But the, the backend for the search API is, is a database. So I can go and enable the modules. I download the module, the, the latest module from the Drupal repository. So the module requires uh, the Elasticsearch Pitch Pool library that you have two options to install. Uh, the first one is to use the Composer Manager module that will download it for you, but it requires some uh, some work to do it, some commands to execute, and the other way is to enable um, a model from this package, and it's called this install. It's a packet with all the libraries needed for this this stuff. And it's, for example, if we have um, Drupal on shared hosting, which is not very good, but it happened, and you want to use the search. Your option is to go with a dedicated server or something like this to install your search and install your libraries and yeah. But if the client wants just to easily install the libraries, it can use uh, this package. For the demo, I will just install this package. It's the Elasticsearch Connector module and this is the, the package of the libraries. I will install the search API and the watchdog for the demo. It's not the fast system, but <laughs> okay. It installed, so I can go and create my new cluster here. This is just pointing to the Elasticsearch instance you need. So I should name it specifically because I found bug before the session. <laughs> Okay, you can see that we have the two nodes, the st state is green, everything is okay. Okay, well we set up actually the cluster right now. So the Elasticsearch connector is just handling the communication with the Elasticsearch in Drupal. You have some statistics here, you can see the indices in this cluster and so on. But it's only to handle the Elasticsearch specific things. Now we can go and configure the search API. Well, what we need is just start a new server, Elasticsearch. Specify the Elasticsearch connector service and select the cluster we need to use. Okay. So the next step is to change the index server to be the Elasticsearch. You can easily do this by selecting the Elasticsearch server in the search API. And you can select from the existing indexes or you can add a new one. Again, we, we can specify number of shards. Let's be three, no more replicas, zero. And we have the index right now. And just save the settings. There are some statistics I want to implement here that 
for example, mis mistake queries and so on because Elasticsearch can handle this stuff. And it's very important for users to know when somebody searched for something and didn't find anything. So it, it will be very good to have the statistics here and it's un under development right now, but I don't know when it, <laughs> it will happen. I just index the documents in the Elasticsearch and now if I go to the products, I have them from the Elasticsearch in the same order. We have the facets, we have everything working. So. Okay. So, to show you the watchdog right now, we just need to, to go to the watchdog settings because we just installed the module without set, setting it up. We again need to select the cluster, then we need to select the index. We don't have right now index for the watchdog, but we can create one. Okay. Here we can specify the type in the Elasticsearch and which types we want to show. I will show you why we need these fields in the for for the other side. Okay, it's specified so if I log out and log in. And now go to the reports. You will see the same like Drupal watchdog settings, but using the Elasticsearch right now. That works here. And we have the filtering with facets showing you how many messages you have, and you can full text search the watchdog. But to show you why we have to specify the type and the uh, in the type for the watchdog, actually, I will show you the, the second uh, installation of the commerce kickstart. So we can collect the, the watchdogs for several sites and showing them on one. So if you have several sites on shared hosting, you can install somewhere or use uh, plen plenty of uh, hosted solution of Elasticsearch and use them like uh, storage for your watchdog and monitor them from one instance. And let us let me show you how it's done. Again, we need to install the modules. We will install only the watchdog here. There is only one module to show you after that, so. <laughs> uh, what? So again, we need to configure our cluster because it's not represented here. Ah, actually, I forgot to delete it, so we have it. <laughs> Great. So we can select the demo type the watchdog, and let's say we need the watchdog message two, and here we just select to search for the two types, and if I go and log out and log in again to generate some walks. I can see the logs here. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> yeah, this one was the correct one. So I can see the two domains here, and you can filter the watchdog by domain. So, for example, your SLA team can monitor some errors happening on other sites. So in the, the last one I want to so, show you from this uh, this package is the, the views integration. 
uh, as I said, you can select from any indexes you have uh, in the system without having the documents in the Drupal. So you can share documents or whatever. It's a, uh, we have a real use case for this that we, we are importing some, some uh, um, transaction from MySQL to Elasticsearch and use this module to, to see the transaction in Drupal in the main pages. So it's not stable yet, but uh, it works. So if I go to settings, to the views, I can add new view. And now I have the Elasticsearch cluster in front and the types in the indexes I have on my cluster. So I can, for example, select the tweets that I indexed uh, through the advanced REST client and make my view from this. Okay. Now you can see the preview of the view that is showing the messages from the the, the type in the Elasticsearch, and they are not in Drupal actually. So enough for the demo. <laughs> Thank you. So we need to talk about the roadmap of this module and. My main idea was to collect as many contributors I can for this uh, module because I believe it, it can be something good and helpful for all of us with the performance stuff and so on. So the, the roadmap, roadmap is of course to make a stable version of Drupal 7. Uh, there was a Drupal, uh, Google Summer of Code that uh, made the integration for uh, Drupal 8 and I have a request to review the code and maybe merge it in my module and start working for Drupal 8 version. Uh, I, I want to build the statistics, to integrate Kibana, one tool that is very nice for some admin stuff. And these are, I think, pretty good <laughs> points and they are very big. So if you are interested in contributing to this module, I will be <laughs> very, I will appreciate this actually. So I want to thank some guys from uh, Denmark that uh, invest some money in this project without uh, giving anything. <laughs> um, the guys are actually very cool. They just invest in module because they want just to to make the the module better and to have uh, better um, users. Um, we actually contribute some uh, stuff to, because for Drupal 7, we, we have two modules uh, for Elasticsearch. The one is, the, the first one was uh, Search uh, API Elasticsearch. That is only a, a Search API integration, and we start uh, contributing to, to this module, but uh, there was no response there uh, without applying the patch, and we decided to, to switch to another version of the library and to build this ecosystem. So. Thanks to these guys and the contributors. <laughs> okay, thank you. If you have any questions. Uh, um, yeah, I have a question about the Geo search. What Geo field do you prefer to use for it? Well, the, the Geo fields, we actually, right now we have. Um, implementation of the location, I think. But uh, we didn't uh, make some deep researches on which is the best field there. So it's hard to say right now. Because this is a part that we need to to investigate and implement in this model because it, it's not very well supported right now. For example, the location 
the, the location module is not supported at all. It's a geolocation or something like this in Drupal module that is supported right now. So, yeah. And uh, last question. Um, how should you work with Elasticsearch when you have production and development? Should you have different uh, Elasticsearch servers or should you work with different indexes? Well, this is actually depends to you. Um, I, I actually prefer to have uh, different servers. Okay. Thank you. Hi, great presentation. Mm -hmm. I have two questions. Uh, first, uh, we're using uh, Solar a lot as uh, with the Angular Headless Drupal, and that's great when you do uh, when you have a strict um, uh, data model and scheme and everything. Uh, so I'm interested in the schemaless part. Now, uh, if you create a new content type with a bunch of fields and you create content and click index or whatever, uh, is the output good enough? I mean, uh, for uh, an API, or well, do you need to clean well, it up? Well, actually, somehow? when you uh, it's a schema less actually, because when you put a document without a schema, it will auto generate a schema for you based on the document. It will match uh, if the, your field is string in the JSON, if it's an uh, integer, if it's a fault, and it will create a schema for you. And there are some points, for example, the geo geolocation stuff, where you, if you put a geolocation without adding a schema, uh, you will receive a nested object. It will not be a geolocation point. Mm -hmm. So. From time to time, you need to touch the, the schema, but uh, most of the time, if you don't have any specific data, uh, d data like uh, geolocation, it will work for you. Yep. With so, so basically, you can just add the remove fields, and uh, yeah. it just uses the machine name, and yeah. you get the. Re yeah. Okay, sweet. You can add the ID. Uh, you can put the one structure of the document. The other ID can be something different in, in the structure. You can you can have more fields, and it will add it in the in the Elasticsearch without problem. Okay, second question. Is there like a, a soft commit option uh, similar to the solar for soft commit where you don't have to like re-index a lot but you just update that specific? Well, uh, I'm not sure but I think that there was some some options but I'm not sure. Yeah. Sweet, thanks. Awesome stuff, thanks for the presentation. Also have two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, first one, uh, is it an idea, uh, did you think about uh, an option to make a caching backend uh, in Elasticsearch for Drupal? Yeah, I actually had the idea to, to to remove MySQL and use the Elasticsearch. That was my second question. <laughs> would, that, would that be, would that be uh, feasible? Uh, I don't believe this. In, in Drupal 7, in Drupal 8 I'm not sure. Uh, I didn't... Uh, go deep in, into the database layers. Mm -hmm. But in Drupal 7, for sure, it will not work because a lot of modules are using MySQL specific yeah. queries and it's not possible actually. And about, what about the caching backend option? The caching backend option, I believe it's okay because it's just key key value and it will not be a problem. Because the advantage would be that it's self-replicating and consistent, so it's very easy to set up a highly available yeah, caching. Yeah, this is actually a good uh, good point. Maybe I will add the issue. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thanks for this uh, very nice presentation. I have a question about the views integration because mm -hmm. Search API has uh, also got views integration. So why did you wrote your own views integration uh, module? Yeah, this is because uh, if you don't have content in Drupal, mm -hmm. for example, uh, the use case uh, I mentioned, we have a MySQL table with the transactions, payment transaction, and we need to search them uh, with uh, free text search and so on. We put them in the Elasticsearch, and they are not in Drupal, just from one MySQL table to the Elasticsearch, and then Drupal can build a view from this uh, Elasticsearch index. That's why. Okay, that's uh, And uh, we are now sprinting for Search API 8, so uh, if you want to join or have a discussion yeah, with this us, this would be, be very actually. nice. Yeah, thank you. Okay, if you have any questions, I will be here, and I'm a responsible guy. A uh, little bit hard to speak uh, English, but uh, <laughs> I will try my best to explain you and uh, share ideas. And, uh, thank you. <laughs>